Now, the rest of the story. Charlie was ten. School was out for Christmas vacation. The family had decided to spend their holiday in the country. A light snow was falling, and Charlie pressed his nose against the window pane. How unlike the big city, where traffic blackened the white loveliness almost before it touched the street. But here, all was quiet and cottony white. Say, how would Charlie like to go for a car ride in the snow, his mother asked. Oh, Charlie would like that. So the boy and his mother got in the car and drove off down the snow-laden lane. Even the tiniest twigs in the barren trees glistened. Charlie wondered what made the ice cling like that as he listened to the squeaky crunch of the snow under the car tires. And the snow fell more heavily now. A mile or so down the road was a gentle curve. Mother knew it was there. She drove slowly approaching it. So it was doubtless a patch of ice which caused the automobile to slide off to one side and into a shallow snowdrift. Oh, Charlie thought it was fun. Mother smiled and shifted into reverse, but no traction. The wheels were spinning, and Mother was no longer smiling. Charlie could not wait to be asked. He opened the passenger door and climbed down into the snow. I will push, he declared, and he scampered around to the front of the car. Well, again, Mother stepped on the accelerator, but... Despite her son's assistance, the automobile just sat there stuck. It was all right, Mother reassured. There was a house not far away. Strangers, but surely friendly strangers. So hand in hand, young Charlie and his mom started walking. The snow fell more heavily now. It seemed a very long way up that slippery lane. But then at last, in a vague silhouette against the gray-white sky, the big house loomed before them. Mother knocked on the door. Moments later, it was answered by a lady with a kind face. Yes, of course, Charlie and his mother could come in. Yes, of course, they could use the telephone. And the lady nodded in apparent concern as they related their predicament. Well, it wasn't long before somebody had come to rescue the adventurers, mother and son, on that very, very special holiday. I realize what you've heard doesn't sound particularly special. But to Charlie's mother, and especially to young Charlie, how very special it was indeed. Because, you see, during the Christmas season of 1958 at Sandringham in England, a ten-year young boy learned what it was like to be ordinary. That was most remarkable in itself pomp and ceremony would follow him forever after. But there was that one healthy unseen from his childhood. That adventurous afternoon meant only for him and his mother. And there was the look on the face of the kind lady at Amher Hall when two visitors came to call, a mother and a son seeking refuge from the snow. Elizabeth, the Queen of England, and a ten-year young Charles, the heir to her throne. And now you know, of course, the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. You know, there probably weren't many moments when Prince Charles, well, King Charles, felt ordinary. According to newspaper articles, the date was January 15, 1959. All of Britain lay under heavy snow that disrupted communications and caused chaos on the roads, but the Queen was unconcerned. During World War II, she worked in the motor pool. When Princess Elizabeth turned 18 in 1944, she insisted upon joining the Auxiliary Territorial Service, ATS, the women's branch of the British Army. She began training as a mechanic in March of 1945, which consisted of a driving and vehicle maintenance course. Newspapers called her Princess Auto Mechanic. During her training, King George VI and Princess Margaret came for a royal visit and watched as Princess Elizabeth worked on a vehicle's engine. Since serving in the motor pool, Princess Elizabeth, later Queen Elizabeth, loved to drive herself. 
Because of her royal status, she never had to take the standard driving test to get a driver's license. She actually never had a driver's license. I wonder if King Charles has a driver's license. On that cold, snowy day, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles left the Queen's country home at Sandringham. I'm standing in front of Sandringham House. The Queen drove Prince Charles in her black station wagon on the snow-covered roads through the 20,000-acre estate. Enjoying the drive in the snow, the Queen just kept driving. Near the village of Anmer, the Queen turned onto a side road. The snow on the open field must have been gorgeous. But just about 200 yards down that road, the Queen's station wagon slid into a two-foot snow drift and stuck. They were about six miles from Sandringham House. They had no choice but to walk. The small village of Anmer has only about 30 homes to house less than 70 residents. They walked up to a home known as Anmer Hall and purportedly knocked on the door. Now I picture this house in Mr. Harvey's episode as being just a small rural home. But Anmer Hall is a large uh, Georgian country house with 10 bedrooms. It was originally built in 1802. At Anmer Hall, the caretaker heard a knock at the door. He was surprised to see the monarch and the future monarch standing in front of him. He quickly let them in and showed the queen to the telephone. The queen called Sandringham House and within minutes a royal car arrived at Anmer for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles. They thanked the caretaker and left. Another group of men dug the queen's station wagon out of the snow and returned it to Sandringham House. The queen was unsatisfied and wanted to see more of the snow-covered estate and the country surrounding it. Within an hour after returning to Sandringham House, Queen Elizabeth rounded up Prince Charles and Princess Anne and they went out driving again. This time, they had a chauffeur at the wheel. This was the second time in a week that Prince Charles was inconvenienced by the weather. On the previous weekend, Prince Charles and his father, Prince Philip, went on a hunting trip. They planned to hunt on an island a few miles from Sandringham House, but heavy rains flooded the island. The rain turned to ice, which prevented Prince Charles and Prince Philip from returning to Sandringham House. They spent the weekend in a pub. Oh, and Anmer Hall, the home where Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles sought help, Queen Elizabeth bought it. Prince William, Princess Kate, and their children used Anmer Hall as their main residence from 2015 to 2017. They still use it as their private country home. You know, it's nice to hear a positive story about Queen Elizabeth spending time with Prince Charles. In our modern hustle and bustle world, we all need to spend more time with the people we love, with our families, don't you think? I'm Brad Dyson, and as Paul Harvey would say, good day.